A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have much pleasure in welcoming all of you to this 105th annual general meeting of your company, which I declare open since the requisite quorum is present. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be conducting this meeting sitting down this time, unlike in the earlier years, due to an injury in my leg. I seek your indulgence and I hope you do not mind. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be aware of the sad demise of Mr. S.H. Khan, our independent director, on 12th January 2016. May I request that we observe a minute's silence as a mark of respect to the departed soul. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May I now introduce to you my colleagues on the board who are present on the dais. On my left, starting from the end, Mr. A.V. Girija Kumar, a non-executive director of your company. Mr. Arun Duggal, non-executive director of your company. Mr. Habib Rahman, non-executive director of your company. Mrs. Meera Shankar, non-executive director of your company. Mr. P.B. Ramanujam, non-executive director of your company. Mr. S.B. Mathur, a non-executive director of your company. Mr. Rajiv Tandon, a whole time director of your company. On my right, from the extreme end, Mr. Nakul Anand, a whole time director of your company, Mrs. Nirupama Rao, a non executive director of your company, Mr. S. B. Manak, non executive director of your company, Mr. S. Banerjee, non executive director of your company, Mr. A. Bajal, non executive director of your company, Mr. Sanjeev Puri, a whole time director of your company, Mr. K. Vaidyanath, a non executive director of your company. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to mention here that Mr. P. V. Dhoble, whole time director, retired on 6th December 2015 after 38 years of service. Mr. K. N. Grant, whole time director, retired on 22nd January 2016 after 35 years of service. Mr. R. E. Lovell, non executive director, since 18th November 2013, stepped down from the board on 22nd June 2016 on medical grounds. I would also like to mention that this is the last AGM that Mr. K. Vaidyanath and Mr. A. V. Girja Kumar will be attending as directors of your company. Mr. Vaidyanath, who has been on your company's board as whole time director from 17 January 2001 and as a non executive director since 3rd January 2011 will complete his current term shortly on 28th July 2016. Mr. Girija Kumar, who was appointed by your board as additional non executive director from 31st July 2015 after completion of his term. Um, on 22nd July 2015 as non-executive director holds office until the conclusion of this meeting. I would therefore take this opportunity on behalf of everyone present here to acknowledge their valuable contribution to your company. The financial, thank you. 
the financial statements for the year ended 31st March 2016, the reports of the Board of Directors and the Auditors, the Secretarial Audit Report, the Register of Directors and Key Managerial Personnel and their shareholding, and the Register of Contracts or Arrangements are available and will remain open and accessible for inspection during the continuance of this meeting. Certificate dated 20th May 2016 from Messrs. Deloitte, Haskins and Sales, the auditors of your company, in respect to the company's employee stock option scheme, is also placed before this meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting marks a personal milestone for me, although I hope to continue to address you in the coming years too as chairman of your company. Today is the last time I am addressing you in the joint capacity of chairman and chief executive officer of ITC. It is therefore natural at this juncture to reflect on the years gone by. It is also my intention to give you a glimpse of the future direction of your company and a sense of its sinews that are in the process of being shaped that will lend it an abiding source of competitive strength. But before that, I would like to place on record my sincere gratitude to you, our valued shareholders, for having given me this privilege over these years. It has been a momentous journey in shaping one of India's most admired corporations. Your unstinted support has made this voyage deeply fulfilling. Some of you may recall the turbulent times that engulfed your company around the time you placed me at the helm. Indeed, those were trying circumstances and a far cry from the ITC you are familiar with today. The company was confronted with formidable challenges that threatened the very foundation of future progress. Its earlier diversification forays had either faltered or failed. A battle for control of the company had ensued amidst a public smear campaign. Doubts were raised even about the very integrity of the organization. A media trial on the encouragement of the then representatives of our overseas shareholder had already pronounced the Indian management inept, fraudulent, and guilty ahead of any independent investigation. The momentum of sentiment seemed to encourage the enforcement authorities to use the powers vested under the draconian FERA law to incarcerate 14 members of the then current and past management, including two past chairmen of the company, even before any substantial investigation had progressed. A retrospective excise demand of 803 crores on the very first day of my assuming charge as chairman and CEO, amounting to three times the annual profits then, imperiled your company's financial stability. The shareholders and members of the board stood divided on the future direction of the company. Amidst all this adversity, the challenge was to steady the ship and articulate a superordinate vision for the company, re-emphasizing commitment to abiding values and revitalize its human resource around a common purpose. There was an urgent need to restructure and reposition the company for extreme competitiveness in, a, in an increasingly globalizing Indian market. It was at such a juncture that we resolved to build an exemplary Indian enterprise that would create enduring value for our, our economy. An organization that would adopt the credo of putting India first, keeping country before corporation and the institution before the individual. The journey since then has been purposeful, though at times arduous, testing a very grit and determination. A multi-pronged strategy was put into play to transform ITC into an engine of growth 
that will make a substantial contribution to the Indian economy whilst rewarding shareholders by creating growing value for the Indian society. The portfolio of businesses was rationalized by exiting from those that were not well positioned to create long-term value, leveraging internal competencies that best matched the opportunities of an emerging economy, a fresh portfolio of businesses was arrived at, creating multiple drivers of growth. Over the years, the patriotic sense of India first has grown into a full-blown aspiration to be a national champion subserving the country's larger priorities. This is not only manifest in the creation of world-class Indian brands, but also in the triple bottom line goals of the company to nurture larger societal value. The need to sustain global competitiveness in economic value creation while simultaneously creating larger societal value has led to innovation in business models that seek to synergize the building of economic, ecological, and social capital as a unified strategy. The progress of ITC is thus best captured in the outcomes achieved along the triple bottom line dimensions. The appreciation of these outcomes would become more meaningful when seen in the context of the challenges facing our society. Therefore, I wish to spend a few moments to outline before you these challenges. India is home to one-third of the world's poor. Nearly 300 million people need critical support to move out of endemic poverty. With close to 12 million youths joining the workforce every year, there is a crying need to create opportunities for gainful employment. These challenges will get further compounded as India becomes the most populous country in the world by 2030. More than 1.5 billion people will need food, nutrition, water, energy, education and health security. Already environmental resources are under huge stress given the fact that with 17% of the world's population, India has only 2.4% of world's land, 4% of global water, and 1% of forest resources. The need to create sustainable livelihoods and replenish our environmental resources has never been more urgent. Undoubtedly, high growth rates are necessary to address these challenges, but that by itself may not be sufficient to ensure social equity or environmental replenishment. A new paradigm of growth is therefore called for, an integrated triple bottom line approach that builds competitiveness while at the same time ensuring that the environment is nourished and large scale sustainable livelihoods are created. I call this new paradigm responsible competitiveness which to my mind is a prerequisite to creating a more sustainable future. Your company was amongst the first to make triple bottom line performance a core purpose of its business strategy, much before sustainability took center stage in the world of business. Over the years, every address to you at the annual meetings has been preceded by an account of your company's contribution to the triple bottom line. Today, it is indeed heartening that your company's commitment beyond the market is not only evident in the range, scale, and scope of its businesses, but also in the larger contribution it has made to sustainable and inclusive growth. Let me highlight some of the key facets of this inspiring contribution. Your country's avowed aspiration to be an engine of growth for the national economy has made impressive progress over the years, creating multidimensional value for the Indian society. The strategy to pursue multiple drivers of growth has led to a remarkable 17-fold growth in your company's non-cigarettes businesses since 1996, registering a net segment revenue of 23,000 crores. Compared to the size of ITC in 1996, 
the non-cigarette businesses alone represent a size akin to creating five ITCs of that time. Your company today ranks amongst the top three in the private sector in terms of contribution to the exchequer. In financial year 15-16, alone your company's contribution stood at 30,750 crores. Many would be unaware that in the year gone by, as much as 81% of the company's value addition accrued to the exchequer at the central and state levels, including the share of dividend and retained earnings attributable to government-owned institutions. Over the years, the ITC group has also emerged as a large exporter of goods and services. Foreign exchange earnings of the ITC group in the last 10 years aggregate nearly 6.8 billion US dollars. Of this, agri-exports constitute 57%, thereby creating value for the rural economy by effectively linking the small farmer to international markets. Your company has today emerged as India's leading FMCG marketeer, a globally acclaimed icon in green hoteliering, a market leader in the Indian paperboard and packaging industry, a pioneering trailblazer in, in, in farmer and rural empowerment through its agribusinesses, and a player of promise in the field of information technology. ITC's paperboards business has sustained leadership in its segment, as well as in environmental stewardship, and grown from a capacity of around 1 lakh tons in 1996 to around 7 lakh tons today. The packaging business has fortified its position in both cartons and flexibles, winning global acclaim for packaging excellence. The next segment revenue of paperboards, paper and packaging has grown nearly tenfold to over 5,000 crores in this period in the face of intense international competition. The hospitality business of your company, which operate, operated 12 hotels in 1996, has grown to over 100 properties today, comprising four brands, namely ITC Hotels, Welcome Hotels, Fortune and Welcome Heritage. Its signature luxury properties have won international acclaim. The iconic ITC Grand Bharat was ranked fourth in the world and number one in Asia by Condé Nast. The luxury chain comprising the brand ITC Hotels has earned global distinction for pioneering a new ethos of responsible luxury. The contribution of your company's hotels business to Indian tourism landscape has multiplied manifold over these years. The new FMCG businesses, nurtured over the last decade or so, have crafted a vibrant portfolio of around 25 mother brands that are increasingly gaining market standing. These brands have recorded a consumer spend of more than 12,000 crores. The Ashirwad brand crossed the 3,000 crores mark, Sunfeast over 2,500 crores, while Bingo and Classmate exceeded 1,000 crores each. In comparison to 25 factories that serviced your company's operations in 1996, ITC's businesses are today served by over 200 factories spread across the country, reflecting a symphony of local, regional, and national scales. Over the years, there has been a transformation in the scale and complexity of your company's distribution and logistics infrastructure. From fewer than 100 SKUs in 1996, the distribution highway today handles over 1,500 SKUs of multiple businesses directly servicing over 2 million retail outlets across trade channels in 100,000 markets. This transformational growth in the range, scale of businesses has led to a tenfold increase in the company's revenue to over 51,000 crores since 1996, whilst profit before tax grew 33 times to over 14,900 crores. In the last two decades, market capitalization has grown 
over 50 fold to touch an all time high of 3 lakh crores recently. Total shareholder returns during this period clocked a compound annual growth of 24 percent. It is deeply satisfying that your company has built an impressive present, presence across all the three sectors of the economy, namely agriculture, manufacturing and services. This has created a repertoire of diverse skills, the harnessing of which in a synergistic manner has provided many a unique source of competitive advantage to your company. What gives me a sense of ful fulfillment, however, is your company's global leadership in sustainability performance. Your company's large-scale program in societal value creation has been focusing on creating sustainable livelihoods, empowering local communities, conserving and replenishing the environment, thereby helping to address the challenges of climate change. This multidimensional effort has transformed many a life and contributed towards a sustainable environment for future generations. I am sure you serve, you, sh you share our collective pride that ITC has emerged as the only company in the world of comparable dimensions to be carbon positive, water positive, and solid waste recycling positive for several consecutive years now. It is a source of deep satisfaction that ITC with its operations, far from being a burden on environment, has been a net contributor to its enrichment. In our country, where employment generation is an urgent priority, your company has progressively been able to sustain livelihoods for over six million people, embracing the weakest in our society. Your company's commitment to a low carbon path has created some of the finest exemplars of sustainability in the world. Today, over 47% of energy consumed in the ITC group is from renewable sources. A remarkable feat given the large spread scale and energy intensity of your company's operations. Your company's brand, ITC Hotels, has emerged the greenest luxury hotel chain in the world. All its properties are today LEED certified at the highest platinum level. ITC Grand Chola, the world's largest LEED platinum hotel, the ITC Green Center in Gurgaon, was rated the world's highest scoring LEED platinum green building, whilst ITC Sankhya, the data center in Bengaluru, is the world's first such utility to receive the LEED Platinum certification. The ITC eChapal ecosystem has over the years benefited 4 million farmers and has been acclaimed as one of the most successful rural empowerment program in the world. Its global acclaim is evident in the numerous case studies written on it across the world, including the one at Harvard Business School. A shiny example of triple bottom line contribution lies in ITC's large scale afforestation program. This initiative has expanded to green over 2,25,000 hectares, generating more than 100 million person days of employment for poor tribals and farm workers. India's finite land faces competing demands for food, fodder, fiber, fuel, and forest among others. Your company's innovative agroforestry initiative has demonstrated that such competing demands can be largely reconciled on a single farm, multiplying farm, farmer income and farm outcome. This program has already covered 25,000 hectares and has the potential to grow rapidly. Water stress remains a critical challenge for India's agriculture. Your company's soil and moisture conservation program has been addressing this challenge by promoting integrated watershed development in moisture stressed areas. The program currently extends to 42 districts across 10 states, covering nearly 2,60,000 hectares. Livestock is one of the primary sources of livelihood in rural areas. 
your company's extensive animal husbandry program, implemented for over a decade now, has serviced nearly 13 lakh milch animals, improving productivity manifold, thereby supplementing rural incomes. Over the years, the Women Empowerment Program of your company has made an impactful difference to the lives of over 50,000 rural women. Taking the initiative further, a new program that seeks to mainstream ultra-poor women has been launched. Over 10,000 women are currently being trained in entrepreneurial skills and provided with assets for income generation. The extensive intervention of your company in strengthening the reach and quality of primary education has benefited over 4,60,000 disadvantaged children. In addition, a skilling and vocational training program has trained over 31,000 youths, making them more employable. A health and sanitation program has also been in operation for a while, promoting a hygienic environment through prevention of open defecation, thereby reducing incidence of waterborne diseases. So far, over 15,000 low-cost sanitary units have been constructed, covering 20 districts in 10 states. Your company's WOW program, Well-Being Out of Waste, has been promoting extensive segregation and recycling of waste. It has so far mobilized, among others, the support of many commercial and industrial establishments, households and schools, comprising 5 million citizens, including 5 lakh students. You'll be pleased to know that ITC's social investments program this year has covered 166 districts in 26 states. Despite all these accomplishments, more than anyone else, I know that your company's quest is far from over. There are yet new frontiers to cross and new horizons to explore. We must continue to strengthen and fortify the businesses of the company, protect, nurture, build, challenge, innovate, expand and grow, thereby continuously revitalizing and shaping a national champion that can generate even more value for our stakeholders and our society. Towards this end, multiple projects have been planned with an outlay of 25,000 crores over the next five years. Most of your company's businesses are well positioned to contribute in good measure to the triple bottom line goals of your company. However, it is the new fast-moving consumer goods businesses through the establishment of world-class Indian brands that hold the highest promise for value creation, both for your company and for the Indian economy. Tomorrow's world will belong to those who create, own, and nurture intellectual capital. Such ownership of intellectual property manifest in brands provides a superior basis for sustaining competitive advantage over the long run. World-class brands lend a huge intangible value to products and services, enabling them to command a premium and loyalty from consumers. When a country's institutions build world-class brands, they enrich its economy. Successful brands are not only a perpetual source of value creation, but also a badge of honor for the country of their origin. The mission to create world-class brands in India must therefore assume the fervor of a national movement. Such world-class Indian brands will help create, capture, and retain larger value for the economy. Creation of new generation of world-class brands demands tremendous staying power with substantial investment commitment over the long haul. It requires deep consumer insight, continuous application of cutting-edge research and development, differentiated product development capacity, state-of-the-art manufacturing, and an extensive trade marketing and distribution network. Above all, it demands a determination to succeed against all odds. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to be able to state that in a short period of a decade or so, 
your company has been able to build many successful brands that are fast gaining strength. Consumer spend in the new FMCG brands today is almost twice the size of ITC in 1996. The 25 newly created mother brands of your company spanning a wide range of goods are expected to continuously expand consumer franchise. Some of the north, noteworthy brands include Ashirwad, Sunfeast, Bingo, Yippee, Be Natural and Candiman in the food space. Fayama, Vivel, Engage and Savlon in the personal care arena. Classmate in the education and stationery segment. Wise Lifestyle, Will's Lifestyle and John Players in Lifestyle Apparel. Mangaldeep in Agarbatti and Aim in Matches. Your company aspires to be the number one player in the new fast-moving consumer goods businesses and has set a revenue target of 1 lakh crores by 2030. What may be uppermost in your mind is the question as to how ITC will achieve this audacious goal. Undoubtedly, such an aspiration in an intensely competitive market calls for an orchestra of effort that demands significantly superior enterprise strengths. It is therefore very reassuring that your company has over the years built an impressive array of competitive strengths, while several others are in various stages of formation. Let me now take this opportunity to give you a brief overview of the company's enterprise strengths and a glimpse of the future potential that resides in their application. Over the years, your company's deep association with the farm sector through ITC e Chopal has built a formidable capacity for production and procurement of demand-led, identity-preserved, superior quality agri-commodities. Coupled with the agri-business's extensive knowledge of farming and crops, this age-old engagement provides a unique source of competitive advantage to your company's foods businesses. Recognizing the critical role of breakthrough innovation in shaping game-changing products of the future, your company has invested substantially in creating intellectual capital through a globally benchmarked ITC Life Sciences and Technology Center in Bengaluru. This center, along with other facilities spread over 4 lakh square feet, is driving science-led product innovation with a world-class team of 350 highly qualified scientists. In a short span of time, over 480 patent applications have been filed. The intellectual property so created will strengthen leadership of your company's brands and enrich our country's intellectual capital. The culinary expertise of a galaxy of world-class chefs of your company's hotels business lends an invaluable strength to ITC's foods business. The intimate knowledge of consumer preferences gained from close engagement with guests all over India provides unmatched insight in shaping newer and differentiated products to win in the marketplace. The capability to drive superior efficiencies in supply chain management is critical to sustaining the competitiveness of companies fast-moving consumer goods businesses. Your company is investing substantially in physical infrastructure assets close to markets to reduce wastage from multiple handling and transportation by co-locating manufacturing and distribution facilities. Around 20 such modern integrated consumer goods manufacturing and logistics facilities are under development. This will substantially enhance supply chain efficiency at much lower cost. In addition to the enterprise strengths I have touched upon, lies the traditional marketing prowess of ITC that encompasses deep consumer insight, superior branding skills, packaging excellence, and an extensive trade marketing and distribution capacity. This synergy of institutional strengths drawn from different parts of your company's businesses 
provides unique sources of competitive advantage. Having said that, let me give you a few examples of how this synergy of strengths will create new opportunities for our company in the foreseeable future. Given the unique con construct of your company with its strong presence in agri, packaged foods and personal care products, a convergence of R&D capabilities is being leveraged by ITC's Life Sciences Center to deliver products of the future aimed at nutrition, health and well-being. This will also address widespread concerns of the Indian population about maladies relating to diabetes, cognition, gut and vascular, cardiovascular health. Similarly, product development in the personal care arena will be inspired from research focusing on Indianness, namely a blend of Indian genetics as well as environmental factors of prime relevance to the Indian consumer of personal care products. Your company's foods business is adding a new dimension by progressively entering the health and wellness space. A recent, a recent innovation in this space was the launch of Ashirwad Sugar Release Control Atta, a first of its kind Atta with a lower glycemic index which helps in managing blood sugar. A plethora of possibilities is being examined in functional foods and food fortification for better nutrition. In the not too distant future, these science-led innovations will add another vibrant driver to the foods business. An example of synergy of superior agri-sourcing and culinary expertise of hotel chefs is manifest in the remarkable success you have witnessed in the leadership of Ashirwad Atta. Its strong emotional bond with consumers is a direct result of the specially crafted unique blends of identity preserved wheat customized to meet regional preferences. Such synergy is expected to infuse competitiveness to your company's Sunbeam brand of premium coffee that is due to be launched shortly. The expertise of ITC's hotels coffee baristas, the knowledge of coffee garnered over 25 years of global trading by our company's agribusiness and the skill of master blenders can co-create differentiated coffee offerings for true connoisseurs. You may have also learned from media reports the warm reception accorded to ITC's luxury chocolates launched under the Fabel brand. These world-class chocolates have elicited, without exception, superlative comments from discerning consumers. This is once again testimony to the unique sources of competitive advantage that ITC's diverse institutional strengths combine to generate. Very soon, Fabel chocolates launched recently at ITC Gardenia in Bengaluru will be available at all ITC hotels before being extended more widely. As we speak, plans to cultivate medicinal and aromatic plants are making rapid progress, lending potential strength to your company's foods business in the health and wellness space. In addition, in line with your company's stringent processes relating to food safety, ITC has engaged with farmers to implement an integrated farm management program to grow high quality, super safe spices. A new range of such spices tested for as many as 450 contaminants at par with European standards in comparison to only 10 in the domestic market will be available shortly for the Indian health conscious consumer. Going forward, with progressive development in the areas of future potential, some of which I have outlined today, your company will increasingly enhance its leadership in the farm-to-fork value chain, making a large and growing contribution to the twin priority sectors of our economy, namely agriculture and food processing. Your company's strong presence in the agri-food value chain also places it in a unique position to explore new opportunities, 
particularly in the area of perishables, including fruits and vegetables. As you may be aware, only 10% of India's agri-produce, including milk, is processed. Colossal agri-wastage, particularly in perishables, not only poses a constraint on farmer income, but also fuels supply-side shortages leading to food inflation. Unfortunately, the weak cold chain infrastructure and the virtual absence of well-established end-to-end players impede the growth of processed food industry, more so in the case of perishables where it is most needed. It is for this reason that your company is exploring the opportunity to invest in a state-of-the-art cold chain to cover farm, farm produce, including fresh, frozen, and dehydrated fruits and vegetables. Towards this end, the physical infrastructure being developed by our company will be utilized to establish cost-effective regional cold chains across the country. Such new opportunities will further strengthen ITC's leadership across the farm-to-fork value chain, enabling greater value realization to the farmer, reduction of wastage, and a year-round availability of high-quality products for the Indian consumer. I am confident that the collective energies that reside in these new opportunities, as well as in the potential arising from your company's traditional new and developing enterprise strengths, will impart strong growth drivers to achieve the 1 lakh crores new fast-moving consumer goods goal by 2030. There are inspiring examples of national champions worldwide who enrich their economies in many dimensions, bringing honor to their countries by their innovative excellence. Apple in the US, Samsung in Korea, Toyota in Japan are some of these exemplary corporations. Can we in India not dream of building our own institutions that stand amongst the finest in the world? I believe we can and we must. As a company deeply rooted in India's soil, ITC has passionately pursued its compelling vision to create an exemplary national institution of great value to our society. I must confess that a deep sense of patriotism has driven me to traverse many an untrodden path in leading ITC's aspiration to be such a national champion. From the transformation that I have outlined before you today, I draw comfort that collectively we have made remarkable progress. The best, though, is yet to come, and it is my hope that our dream in its fullness would be realized sooner than later. Before I conclude, I would like to place on record my deepest appreciation of the tireless effort of all my colleagues, past and present, who have traveled with me this journey, lending their shoulder to build this great institution. I draw solace that with such a world-class team of professionals at ITC, at all levels, our shared aspiration is surely within reach. I would also like to thank the members of the Corporate Management Committee for their contribution and unwavering support over the years. I also extend my sincere gratitude to the members of the board for the richness of their counsel, encouragement, due diligence in supervision, and commitment to the vision and values of ITC. And finally, a special word of thanks to all of you, our valued shareholders, for your unstinted support and encouragement. I know Team ITC can continue to look to you for your goodwill in the years ahead. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's put India first.